Okay, then the next condition that we're discussing is diabetes. Um, now, with diabetes, we ask, of course, since when have you been diabetic? If they're taking any medications for it, have they had any episode of decreased blood sugar or hypoglycemia during any dental treatment? Um, and what was the last? When was the last time they measured their blood sugar level? And what was the reading? So not only ask when was this reading taken, but also also ask what the reading was. Um, have they developed any complications during any dental treatment because of the diabetes? With diabetes, um, you're more prone to developing, uh, you know, um, a dry socket, uh, wound healing is impaired. So if they've had any extraction, they could possibly say that I had dry socket once, I had a lot of pain after an extraction once, which my dentist linked with diabetes. So that could potentially be one of the complications that they discuss uh, linked with diabetes. Now, the treatment that they could be undergoing, significance of this is that the treatment that they're undergoing could be insulin, metformin, or diet. Um, of course, diet along with insulin and metformin, but some patients are just on dietary control for the, their diabetes. With insulin, um, with insulin, there's just in these patients, we just know that there's an increased risk of the patient becoming hypoglycemic during any dental treatment or anything. Um, with um, then there's metformin, and diet is also one of the ways. With diet, we just want to make sure the patient knows that um, you know they could develop the symptoms or oral signs that um, patients with diabetes have. Um, so we're gonna ask the patient about um, any bleeding from their gums, if they've noticed any white patches in their mouth, or if their mouth has been feeling particularly dry. Uh, bleeding gums because uh, patients who are diabetic have, if their diabetes is not under control, uh, could develop gingivitis, periodontitis. Um, not that 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 they develop it because of the diabetes. But it, they're just more prone to developing it. So if they already have gingivitis, it will just diabetes will just worsen. So it'll only worsen what's already there. Now the white patch could be it could be seen because of two reasons. Now the first reason is that it could be because of candidiasis, which is what may be seen in the mouth of a diabetic, or the white patch could also be lichenoid um, because of metformin. Um, so these are the two reasons for the white patch. Um, then the mouth could be dry also because of the metformin. Um, now we want to discuss with the patient um, and tell them that if they control their diabetes well, that means not only is their health good, but their oral health will be good as well. Because of, uh, just as I mentioned, um, Diabetics being more prone to developing gum disease, etc., and other dental complications associated with diabetes. Um, so, just encourage the patient to make sure uh, they or they maintain their diabetic control, maintain good oral health, etc. Uh, we want to give um, a lot of people say that give early morning or late morning appointments, etc. But it really depends on when the patient has their meal and when they normally take their medication for the diabetes. So just give them an appointment that allows them to take their meal and medication before the appointment. Um, this could be early morning, this could be late morning. It really depends on when the patient does this anyway. So rather than just decide for the patient that you're going to be giving them a late morning appointment, ask the patient when they take this and when would be a convenient time for them once they've taken this. Um, and of course, continue medications, etc. Uh, now coming to epilepsy. Again, ask, uh, since when have they been diagnosed with epilepsy? What medications they take for it? With the medications that they may be taking for it, could be midazolam or phenytoin. Um, as I mentioned earlier, phenytoin is linked with gingival enlargement. So if they are taking phenytoin, ask them, have you noticed any puffiness, swelling of the gums since you've started phenytoin? Um, you want to ask them what dose they're taking of the medication. 
Um, has there been any recent change in the dose of the medication? If there has been a recent change in the medication or the dose of the medication, that means they're more at risk of developing a seizure during treatment. Um, when was the last time they had an epileptic attack? And have they had any during any dental treatment? Um, of course, for these patients, we need to make sure we have the emergency drug equipment ready in case they do have an attack. Of course, we can treat all epileptic patients. So that's not a problem. We just need to be prepared in case they uh, have a seizure. Um, now, how we're going to treat the patients is, or what we're going to do, especially in case of these patients, depends on really what their trigger is. But in any case, for epileptic patients, sometimes the trigger may be uh, bright lights, it could be stress, it could be the fact that they've missed a meal or hypoglycemia. So whatever the trigger is, we especially deal with that. So if they say that the last time the trigger was sunlight, we make sure that we give them sunglasses and we tell them that we'll be making sure that the, the light does not shine directly in their eyes. Um, appointments, of course, short and stress-free. Um, and advise them to take their meal before the treatment. Um, if stress really is such a big trigger, we can even offer them IV sedation. Um, in these patients, we want to avoid giving them dentures. Why this is so important is because if a patient is epileptic and they're having a seizure, they could choke on a denture. Um, so we want to give fixed treatment to these patients so that there's no choking hazard associated with any dental prosthesis that they have. So that covers epilepsy. Um, next we'll be covering some of the other medical conditions.